A hundred years from now, we'll probably have trouble remembering who the American president was or what the share price of Google was. But one thing we may remember is the fact that we had a chance to save the Great Barrier Reef, but we didn't. My name's Ove Hagulberg and I'm a professor at the University of Queensland and I've been studying ecosystems like coral reefs for my entire life. Places like Australia's Great Barrier Reef are truly spectacular. But to me as a scientist, it's the fact that there are thousands upon thousands of species living here, many are unknown to science. There are many questions about how climate change is going to affect the world's coral reefs. Instead of hypothesizing, my colleagues at the University of Queensland and I decided to build reefs of the future on Heron Island and see what lay ahead for places like the Great Barrier Reef. In each of these tubs, we've essentially created a little part of the Great Barrier Reef with corals, fish, algae, all of the normal components of a healthy coral reef. And then we've subjected them to different conditions consistent with the future of the Great Barrier Reef. Now let's just have a look at this tank here, which is one of three which we have uh, in which conditions are like they are today. So what we see in here is a healthy coral reef community. It's been growing for uh, almost a year now and we can see corals, we can see all sorts of creatures living and it looks very much like what we have on the reef crest. If we then go to the next treatment, if you like, this is where we have added CO2, so the CO2 level is much, much higher. And at the same time, we've increased the sea temperature by four degrees, which is what we expect at the end of the century if we continue to warm and acidify the ocean. So let's have a look in here. And this one is just coming into summer, so it's coming into the most stressful time of the year. And already, you've lost most of the corals. There's one particular type of coral that's still living here. What you're seeing here is a mass of algae. It's not particularly nice to look at. And of course, it's what will happen to coral reefs if we don't deal with the problem of climate change. Now, I think it's really important to realize that this is an, an inevitable end game. We still have time to make changes so that we don't end up like this. And if we go over to this tank here, where we do something about the problem of CO2, then we have, um, I think, uh, reasons for hope. This tank is in between the other two. And this represents the outcome if we take serious action on climate change. And the results are quite encouraging. Instead of seeing a complete annihilation of corals, we've got corals in here. They're still holding on. And that's why this tank is really important. It gives us reasons for hope. It shows that if we act on ocean warming and acidification and climate change in general, we'll still have some of the corals left. And from this, as we stabilize conditions on the planet again, we will get the Great Barrier Reef re regrowing. And I think that's really important, that it's not all over. We still have time to act and it's worth acting.